Hey Google, turn on the lights in the office. Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel. My name is Micah, welcome to Floating in Dreams. This is my hobby YouTube channel where I like to chat about all things fashion and makeup. Today we're doing a makeup related video because I've got a full face of H&M Beauty. In case you didn't know, H&M, the clothing brand, has had a beauty line for a number of years now and it's not necessarily a brand that a lot of people chat about. So that's why I thought I could come on here and do a full face of H&M Beauty. It is sort of like drugstore prices, but more like Maybelline L'Oreal drugstore prices, like similar to what we have over here. So a lot of products are around the 10 to 15 euro mark. So they're not super duper cheap, but also not super duper expensive. Um, they're sort of like right there in the middle. And I have a lot of things to talk about, so let's just get started. I'm going to be supplementing some products from my Shop My Stash because I don't have everything, because not all of the products either seems like something I might like or that would be right for my skin. But I have all the color products and I also have all of the base products safe for a primer. So let's get started with the primer and then uh, we'll just get chatting to you about H&M makeup. The first H&M product that I'm going to be using is their Perfect Hydrating Foundation. Now you have to know about the H&M Beauty line that it can be a little bit difficult to get a hold of, which is why I think not a lot of people talk about it. Because if you want to buy this in store, you have to seek out larger H&M stores, because that's where they will sell the beauty products. But I've bought most of, the, most of these actually through the app, because online I was able to find a much wider selection. However, there were a couple of products that I couldn't get my hands on, which I knew they would be selling in store. And when I went in store, to my surprise, there were products there that I hadn't been able to find online. So it definitely pays off looking in different places if you are looking for these particular products. For instance, I was able to find different blush shades in the store that I was able to find online. And also this in particular, um, the foundation that I'm using today is a more hydrating foundation, which is what I prefer. So I knew I wanted to use that. And online, they only had their, I think it was called their Perfect Coverage Foundation, which seems to be more like a bog standard, like middle of the road kind of foundation. And they also seem to be doing a mattifying one, but they don't have everything in store or online, which can be a bit of a pain if you're seeking out certain products. Like if you stock it, because at least here in the Rotterdam store, they've devoted quite a lot of space to beauty products I find. And then this foundation cannot be found, but online all the shades were in stock. So I'm not entirely sure how that works. I think I do need to change, shake this up. And it's a very liquidy foundation. Oh, I forgot to say, but I will have swatches of all of these products um, up on the blog the same day this video goes live. So in the description doc box down below, I'll have a link for you so that if you just want to see swatches of these and you want to see what they look like in a finger swatch, you can see it. But today I'm going to try and use as many of these on my face as I can. Uh, and I actually think that this shade, which is 2N Light Sand, is actually going to be too light for me for a change, which it doesn't happen often, but I think it's just a hair too light, but I have no clue whether this will oxidize because this is actually the first time I'm putting it on my face. So I really, really do not know. So let me see how this blends. Oh no, it matches my neck perfectly. Right, so this doesn't have a whole lot of coverage. It looks very natural on the skin. This is my kind of foundation, I'm not gonna lie. I love foundations like this where it's just super dewy, very light, lit, lightweight, very skin-like, and it's not too matte. And you can definitely see some of my redness still coming through, but that's why I've got a concealer for you. Um, and I do really like the shade match. I feel it's got a really good match in my neck. And that's what I'm always looking for because I have more, like I'm darker in the middle of my face than I am towards the edges. And it looks really weird if my foundation matches the middle part of my face, but not the sides, because that's where I would get the demarcation line. So actually I think the shade 
is pretty spot on for me and I love that they're doing a neutral undertone because a lot of brands don't. Going in with the concealer, this is the Cover Up Concealer. I have this in the shade Ivory. I try to not go too, too light. I think they even do a shade called Alabaster. So I think if you're super fair, uh, this brand also caters to you and they seem to have also that like more like bog standard foundation that seems to come in like over 30 shades. So they seem to have a pretty good shade selection and it's quite affordable because I think if nothing here is over $14.99. So. Also, the concealer just blends in really seamlessly. Of course, these are like first impressions because I don't really have like time to try these out a little bit more. Uh, so I won't be able to update you throughout the day as this wears because I have to go to work and I just can't do that. Um, so we are sort of looking okay. It's nice and glowy. I like it. Now I've got a powder, but before we powder, I thought we could go in with one of these do it all lipsticks. Well, sticks. They're like cream blush highlighter kind of products, depending on the shade you get. So I bought one of the blushy shades. This is called Berry Pink. And this you can use on the cheeks as well as on the lips. And it's got a really nice sort of like rosy shade. Um, but I have other blushes to try and it will be a bit too much if I use both of them. So, but I will be using the Do It All Stick in Pearl. And this is a highlighter shade. And the reason why I want to use it is because I'm not sure the powder highlight I have selected is going to be any good. They don't seem to have a very wide selection of like different highlighting products. They seem to have some loose things. So the highlighter department wasn't that great, but I thought, hey, I can at least layer this over my foundation before I apply powder, then at least we're wearing something, and then we'll see if the other product goes well or not. And this, when I swatched it, it looked really, really pretty. So I'm uh, hoping that it shows up a little bit, but it seems to be one of those like glassy bombs, like it reminds me a lot of the Glossier, uh, what's it called again? Um, the stick in quartz that I have, it, it very much reminds me of that. It's just more like very natural glass-like finish. It's definitely not too, too much. I think, yeah, you can definitely see it catching the light right there. So I did really like that. For powder, I have their Perfectionist Finishing Powder in Soft Sand. This is a skin tone powder, and this is just what it looks like. And I remember when this line first launched, I think I actually used one of these up. So I remember liking it enough. I'm not sure if I still feel the same way because it's been a few years. Okay, so it definitely mattifies and it definitely seems to like sort of give your face a bit of an airbrushed sort of look. So I do really like this and I really like the way my skin looks today. It's very natural, glowy, as I mentioned, but nothing too cakey or drying or weird or overly makeup-y which is what I prefer. Let me quickly do my brows and then we're gonna move on to cheeks because that's the department that I have tried some H&M products before in and those I love, which is why I wanted to actually come on here and do this video to see if their other products are also as good. All right, so brows are on and we're going in with a bronzer that I used to love but that I decluttered because I just had too many bronzers. It's our Solar Flare Bronzing Powder in Sheer Tan. And this is the item that I had to go pick up in store because they didn't have it online. This particular shade had sold out, so I knew I had to go into store to pick it up. This was one of the first bronzers I ever tried that I felt worked really well on my fair skin. Together with the Soap & Glory Solar uh, Bronzing Powder that I've hit pan on, um, which is still one of my favorite bronzers of all time. This was one that I felt was very similar to that, but because I like the solar powder from Soap & Glory just a hair better, I ended up decluttering this particular product, but I remember really loving this bronzer. It just, because it's got the white packaging, and by the way, I wanted to show you this because this is really smart. The powder comes in a white top with a black bottom, the, uh, the bronzer comes in a black top with a white bottom, 
And then the highlighter comes in an all white packaging. So I think that that's a really clever way because that way you can really tell all, the, all of the products apart if you have a couple of these in your makeup collection. I think they did, they, they thought about this. Like the packaging is really nice of these. Uh, so yeah, let me put this on to show you what sheer tan looks like and see if I still like it as much <laughs> as when I first used this years ago. I think this is like definitely like, ooh, like 2015, 2016 when I was using this. Like it's been years. Because I think that's when these products launched for the first time. See, it just adds a nice bit of color back into my face. Ah, oh, love it. <laughs> Yeah, this is, yeah. See, if you're super fair and you're looking for a good bronzer that doesn't break the bank, H&M Sheer Tan. Now I remember why I love this product so much at the time, because this is lovely. And then for the highlighter, this is the product I'm not entirely sure about, so I may have to go in with a bit more of the cover, the Do It All Stick in Pearl. This is the or, uh, Illuminating Luster Powder in Aurora Blush. And I'm thinking, could this be a prismatic amethyst dupe now that Becca has gone? Could this be that kind of product because it seems to have this like pinky lilac-y kind of flash? Let's see how this works on. I'm not entirely sure I'm going to love this because apart from Pris Becca prismatic amethyst, I pretty much de decluttered all of the highlighters that had this kind of shade because I don't wear it a lot anymore. Safer in the winter time. And I actually have... Becca Prismatic Amethyst in my current shop, my stash. Yeah, it's, ooh, it's got a lot of pink. You probably can't see it in the camera, but in real life, it's got like a really strong pinky lilac-y color to it when it doesn't catch the light. But it's pretty, I think. It does look nice. Since I've got it right here, let me see how these swatch next to each other. Oh, no, this has got a lot more white to it. The Becca has a sheerer base, I think. I'm not sure, they look very similar in that. I really put them side by side. Oh yeah, it's a Be Becca Prismatic Amethyst dupe. So for those of you who are, you know, Becca Prismatic Amethyst is my favorite highlighter of all time and you can no longer buy it, because this, this one is not coming back. They're bringing back Champagne Pop as part of the Smashbox line, but this shade is going to be discontinued forever now that Becca is gone. But I would say, that H&M's Aurora Blush Highlighter does exactly the same thing. It perhaps has a bit of a stronger base to it. The Becca, I feel, is a little, like, has less of a base to it. What truly got the love train started? Their blushes. And before you think, H&M must have stolen this hexagon shape from Fenty Beauty. They actually didn't. It's the other way around. Because the H&M line existed before the Fenty Beauty line came out with their hexagon shaped compact uh, shapes. Um, so these blushes have been out for a while. I only had two shades that I could no longer find because I did discontinue some of the shades over time. And I wanted to make sure that the blush I used in today's video was going to be a shade you can still buy. The two shades I have from way back in the day are Tawny Peach, which is my favorite sort of barely there, very neutrally browny kind of blush. That's what got my love for all these like barely there blushes started because that was the first one I tried in its vein. And then one of my favorite sort of like peachy blushes is this melon shade one called Cantaloupe. And I believe both shades you can no longer find. However, a shade that's been in the line since the beginning and you can still buy is this one. And this is Cameo Pink. And I'm actually thinking, I haven't put these side by side yet, but this is Tawny Peach and this is Cameo Pink. Do you just see that this has a bit more warmth and this is a bit more mauve -y, cool toned? So I think this can be my replacement in today's video for that blush. So I think I wanna use Cameo Pink, but I was just browsing and then I also found, found Vintage Rose or Vintage Pink, what's it called? Vintage Pink, sorry. So this is what Cameo Pink looks like and then Vintage Pink is just a little bit deeper, uh, but I think this will be very pretty. Um, maybe I'll put a bit of vintage pink over it just for an extra dab in the middle of my cheeks. But I think cameo pink can be really pretty. And as I mentioned, I just really wanted to... Oh, that that is my kind of blush shade. Mm, love it. 
I don't have to go in with anything deeper. Like, this is what I love about these H&M blushes. Like, they do something, even though this looks like it's going to do absolutely nothing on your face. Do you just see how it adds just enough color? Shall I do it? I'm just going to do it. I'm going to put just a dab of this just right there just for a bit of extra blush. I think I really like this. I am quickly going to be double priming, priming my lids and then I'll be back with you with the eyeshadow that I have bought. Okay, so let's talk eyeshadow because H&M does some really lovely eyeshadow as well. The thing I'm most familiar with are their singles and this is the only thing that I could find online. I couldn't find any of the other products that I will be showing you in a minute. So I got a bunch of singles thinking at least I'll be able to do a full look. So I got two matte shades, uh, which are a uh, cup of Joe, which is a nice like darker cool tone brown. And I've got cocoa mauve and especially this shade I love. Like, isn't that like the perfect like mauve brown sort of crease shade to add some definition? So that looked lovely. And then I got a couple of the shimmers, which this one cocktail dress when I swatched it seemed to be like a matte with a lot of sparkle. So that I'm going to write off straight away. Um, and then I have I Can't Even, which seems to be like a nice cocky silvery kind of shade. But my favorite, which I was surprised they still did, is Sun Worship. And I used to own this because they again did this in the original line. And this is a really lovely, like, it's not a gold, it's not a bronze, it's not a cocky, but it's got all of those shades. Let me just give this a quick swatch so you can see it. It's really dimensional. It's a great one and done eyeshadow. And you know how I feel about one and done eyeshadows. I love those, to be quite fair. Um, but I won't be using any of these singles in today's video because I actually, when I went into store, found out they do a lot more eyeshadow products that they just don't tell anybody about online. So I had already purchased these because there was also um, a 25% discount on these. I think they are $5.99 each. And I'm not sure how, but I did read on the website that you can take the pans out of this packaging and put them in a palette if you want to, because they're magnetized and you can also feel it if you shake the packaging that the pan in there can move around. So I'm pretty sure you can snap them out pretty easily and you can just customize your own palette using H&M singles if that's something that you're interested in. But in store, I found that they're doing cream shadow. This is in the shade Dauphine Truffle. And this looked like such a pretty taupey shade that I was like, if I wear any sort of like just cream eyeshadow, I really like this. So I'm actually going to pack this because I'm getting ready to head out to work and I need to stay the night. So I'm going to put this in my little makeup bag that I've got sitting over here so that I can take it with me and I can lay it underneath another shadow that I've packed just so I can try it out um, and hopefully get back to you when I do a shop my stash at the start of December to let you know how I felt about it. But I really wanted to use one of these palettes today. I've got a palette which is called Vintage Rose. This is called Pink Vintage Rose. And I, there were no testers, so I kind of went on a whim here. But do you just see? It's got a bit of warmth over here, but everything else is quite cool toned. Like we get a really nice cool tone brown. We get ah, a taupey brown. This is also quite taupey. And we've got a couple of really lovely pinky shades. So I was thinking, if the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz is too big and bulky and too pricey for you, maybe this can be a good alternative because it seems to be a good like everyday shades kind of palette. But the one that I was very taken with is the Curated Eye Quad in nice mauves because we all know I love a good mauve tone. Ah, if I can open it, thank you. And this is what that looks like. Like this mauvey shade, these two like browny shades, like this is more of a plum, this is more of a brown, and then you just get this gorgeous shimmer. So I want to make a look with that uh, product for sure, so let me zoom you in and then we can get this eye look going.
right, so that's what the eyeshadow looks like. I'm really liking this. It is a little darker and smokier perhaps than I had expected, uh, especially this shade turned out to be a little bit deeper than I thought. Um, but I layered nicely, they blended very easily. This is just the kind of everyday look that I like going for, you guys. I'm not gonna lie. So this, I like. I was afraid it was gonna blend into nothing, but it definitely doesn't. And then last but not least, I just have some lipsticks here. Now, these cream lipsticks I've tried in the past, but I got a new shade because it really appealed to me, and that's the shade I don't know I want to put on. Um, I already had a Blaze, which is actually one that I kept. Uh, this is my drugstore orange toned red, you could say. So that's one that I already owned and that I knew I loved. And this is the I'm in shock shade, which is like a really nice nude. So that I think will go really nicely with what we've got going on today in the look. So that's why I want to put that on. But I also got a lip gloss in pink clouds that I'm going to have to try a bit more. But it's one of those iridescent sparkly ones that I like to just like wear by itself. It seemed to be quite thick and gloopy though. So I'm not entirely sure. And then something I hadn't tried yet is their matte lipstick range. And I'm not sure if this is anything any good. So I will be updating you on this in like future videos. Um, I bought Follow My Lead, which is like a very bright, corally, reddish tone. Um, I bought To The Nines, which is a really nice deep plum, something vampy. And then I also bought something nude, which is London Season, which seems to be a really nice mauve pinky nude. So those I haven't tried yet. I don't know the formula, so that's what I want to put on this one, because I know I'll love the... If the shade is okay on me, I'll love the formula, because these cream lipsticks from H&M are out of this world amazing if you like something balmy a little bit more easy to wear for every day and you don't want something too matte. So there you have it, that would be the finished look, a full face of H&M makeup and I have to say I really like the look that I came up with. It's really sort of my vibe, my aesthetic, what I like to wear in terms of makeup. A nice bit of a blush going on. It's got a good bronzing shade here. I love how glowy my face still looks from the foundation and also the concealer. Those have been on for a little while longer right now and it's really sort of meshing so nicely together with my skin. I like the eyeshadow. I know I love the lipstick formula as well. And for something that's called like shock, like chalk, like brown, I don't feel it's too brown. It definitely has a rosy undertone to it. So I think this is a very successful makeup look. What do you guys think? Let me know in a comment down below. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week, so I've got lots more content coming your way. And I will be doing a 10 palette review video towards the end of, the uh, towards the end of this week. So... Hope you like. Stay tuned for that. Bye for now. Take care, everybody. I hope you have a great day, and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye-bye.